This is well, Spartan 125. Back for yet another great reaction. Okay. This is VVS 989 Ryan's Raiders Stellaris Invicta. Yes, I just rewrite the whole title because I didn't know what was relevant and what isn't. So, uh, someone come into my comment section there, uh, told me that yes, there, there are other, there are other videos in season one and I already do that. I, I was always meaning to get to them, you know, what, when I said it was the end, what, what, what I meant was the end of the greater Terror union videos, you know, I knew that there was more videos after the epilogue in season one and I always intended to do them. I know I did Mist Man. Oh, sorry, Mist Man. <laughs> the Mist Man before I was supposed to, and that was a mistake. Uh, but I'm going to do Ryan's Raiders now and just do them in the order that that the uh, season one tells me I should. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this one. Now, I just want to say that if you like what you see here, you might want to think about subscribing to my channel. And definitely liking this video and if you like movie and anime reactions you might want to check out my second channel Royal Spartan Take 2 I do like I said I do movie and, and anime reactions on there I'm doing Attack on Titan at the moment and different types of movies uh, you can even request movies that's fine yeah and uh, let's jump it I, as a citizen of the Greater Terran Union, joining the ranks of its armed forces, do solemnly affirm that I will serve my country faithfully and conscientiously, and to my best ability, seek to pursue its edification and advantage, to be obedient to the law and execute the orders of the National Council and the orders of the officers appointed over me, to stand firm in guarding the rights and equality of the Terran citizen, and to defend the honor and dignity of the Terran nation. The oath of enlistment has been spoken in French, Mandarin, Bengali, and a thousand other languages, for the Greater Terran Union recognizes none above any other. It has been sworn on the pages of the Bible, Quran, every holy book, or none at all, for the Greater Terran Union affirms no faith or creed. No single culture binds the Terran state, no single species sustains the Terran name. It is a military tradition that unites the nation, one born centuries ago when all mankind was threatened with extinction. The names of fleets and armies that fought back the Tyrum have been enshrined in the nation's memory, and as the greater Terran Union spread across the galaxy, joined by countless others. It is rare to find a citizen who cannot recite the achievements of the Second Armored, the RGR, the Mighty Second, or the Tamenskaya Division. Yet even among the greatest military units of the Union, there is one that stands above all others. I know. I know. I stopped it right before they were going to get it to tell us who it is. We already know who it is, but... You know, I just want to say, I love uh, the feeling it gives you. You know what I mean? That, that, that... That rush feeling when it's going over all that stuff and it, I mean, you feel proud of it you know what i mean and you're not even you're not even part of it you know what i mean you just feel this sense of pride just talking about it for some reason you know but yeah uh I take it they're not they're not bandits must be part of the the armed forces you know like, a, like an elite unit or something that's out and, those like possible missions and stuff, you know. The most decorated battle group in human history. VVS 989, famously known as Ryan's Raiders. It is with some level of irony then that VVS 989 was never intended to be a notable or even permanent fixture within Fleet Command. Its establishment occurred without ceremony an ad hoc collection of warships rerouted from deployments in the numbered expeditionary battle groups or the Terran home fleet. The flotilla was assigned to Fort Verdun, a station on the increasingly tense border with the Algan Republic. 
the leading power within the alien federation known as the Compact, the Algon Republic had repeatedly attempted to seize Fort Verdun during previous conflicts, and 989 was intended to supplement its defenses. The flotilla was formed around the Passchendaele, one of the last Monte Cassino-class destroyers still in service, and supported by a half-dozen slightly more modern corvettes. Vastly under strength even by the standards of the time, the formation was deemed incapable of sustained offensive action and relegated to garrison duty and inter-system anti-piracy patrols. In 2314, following the declaration of what would become known as the Second Terran Compact War, however, 989 had gained recognition within Fleet Command after the appointment of Commodore Jim Ryan as its commanding officer. A soft-spoken man whose affability and calm was often mistaken for timidity, Ryan's ingenious use of 989's limited forces during training exercises had brought to his command an immense amount of confidence. After successfully destroying Fort Verdun in a simulated attack within Exercise Tycho Nimbus, a feat considered impossible, 989 was granted an unprecedented degree of initiative and freedom of execution at the operational and tactical level. See? Knew it. Knew that we're gonna be like special, or at least the leader was gonna be like a special kind of guy, you know? Gonna lead them to victory and all, you know, where, where other people couldn't do it. He will do it, you know? Should I say they will do it? It's gonna be, yeah. Getting hyped! I'm getting hyped! Everybody else hyped? Let me know in the comments section. Within the first year of the Second Terran Compact War, 989 had earned an almost legendary status amongst the fleet for its series of lightning raids across the Algan border. Acting almost completely unsupported, this small, understrength flotilla had managed to harass Algan convoys and infrastructure across multiple star systems. Repeatedly testing the limits and original intent of his orders, Commodore Ryan struck deep across the Algan border, engaging every target of opportunity while slipping away before any enemy counterattack could be mustered. On nice. three separate occasions, the Algan Republic announced the flotilla had been destroyed, and the Passchendaele in particular became known in Terran propaganda as the Headless Horseman. On <laughs> August 9, 2316, for the first time within the Terran military, VVS-989 was officially assigned the nickname used by its sailors, Ryan's Raiders. Following the end of the war, each ship within the 989 was awarded the Distinguished Unit Citation by the National Council. The Passchendaele presented nine campaign stars, and Jim Ryan himself earned the distinction Hero of the Greater Terran Union. In a post-war analysis of the flotilla's actions, it was concluded that the 989's raids into the Algan Republic had forced the Compact to withdraw substantial forces away from the main theater of operations. Faulty intelligence by the Algan Republic on the raiders' size and capabilities in particular compelled the Algan military into ordering an inefficient disposition of their forces and poor decision-making due to fear of an attack on their homeworld itself. It's nice to know that they, they got the recognition, yeah? I think it's great that they, uh, not much was known about them, you know, from the, the enemy standpoint, you know, they didn't know much about them, even though they'd been, they'd be so quick to go in and make raids and then disappear again, like ghosts, yeah? They didn't even know how many ships they had, or personnel, or whatever, yeah? Caused them to make bad decisions. The release of the novel Raiding Party, the untold story of VVS 989 in 2347, and its adaptation into the award-winning film Hellfire Across the Heavens three years later, kept the flotilla in the public consciousness. As part of a larger rearmament effort in 2378, Fleet Command announced that Ryan's raiders would be reinforced to match the size and capabilities of the numbered expeditionary fleets. This announcement coincided with a special re-release of Hellfire Across the Heavens and a recruitment effort centered around screenings of the film. So, so the military uh, fleet commands using them as like propaganda piece, you know. I mean, they're still put the they're, they're putting them out there to you know to fight, sure, but they're also using them as a recruitment tool, you know, like re-releasing the movie and setting up recruitment things outside probably theaters and things, you know. 
come out and all hype, like, oh, it was awesome, yeah, I want to do that. And they come out and see the recruitment thing, think, yeah, I could do that, I, I could join Ryan's Raiders and do all that stuff, you know? Of course we're not going to miss a chance to do that, you know? No longer able to participate in the types of operations for which it had become famous, the far larger and better equipped VVS-989 of the early 25th century nevertheless cemented its reputation as Fleet Command's most capable naval force. During nice. the numerous wars against the Compact and Volhive, Ryan's raiders served with distinction, but it was its deployment against the Tyrim that earned the battle fleet its greatest achievement. In 2448, when the Sword of Terra oh. unleashed its destructive power on the homeworld of the Tyrim race, it was VVS-989 that had escorted it there undetected. The images of its warships, silhouetted by the burning husk of a broken world, were yeah. seen broadcast across the galaxy, one of the most enduring portrayals of Terran power. Ryan's raiders participated in every major conflict over the next two centuries. It was among the fleets assembled for the Battle of Last Light and nearly destroyed to a ship during Operation Sundial. They were the first to engage the interdimensional invaders, and the last to unleash their weapons against the portal from which these unbidden arrived. Yeah, so they were there for all of it, yeah? Sword of Terror, all that stuff, everything that came after that, even the last battle against the interdimensional species and all. That's crazy, you know? Two centuries? Well, take it, it's not, obviously, it's not the original soldiers that were there, and even uh, the original commander is probably gone by that time. They're still called Ryan's Raiders, right? They still keep that name. No matter what. That's crazy, though. I think they will be doing that long. Going that long. Today, VVS-989 is based on the Ringworld Alwaha, its primary mission is that of conflict deterrence, utilizing the Gateway Network to conduct prompt and sustained interstellar operations in the event of war. With the uh -huh. entire galaxy united under the Greater Terran Union, however, and no major conflicts in the last 75 years, the battle group's only significant deployments have been as part of goodwill tours or training exercises. While individual ships or smaller task forces might be deployed independently from the fleet for anti-piracy duties, the battle group as a whole has not unleashed its weapons in anger for the longest period in its service history. A common joke aboard its warships is that the entire force is to be sent to the Sirius system, to be anchored alongside the ancient Passchendaele as museum ships, relics of a time when the Union's survival had to be earned through blood. Whatever its fate, the veterans of Ryan's Raiders can be found in every tier of Terran citizenship and every era of Terran history. The fleet emblem of VVS-989 is displayed with honor in the homes of Terran politicians, celebrities, athletes, and those of countless Terran citizens. Most importantly, however, it can be found on the gravestones of cemeteries across a thousand Terran worlds. Unbeknownst to all but the highest tiers of citizenship, the first trials have exceeded expectations, and the first campaigns are already being drafted. Targets are being identified, and objectives are being pronounced. Soon, the order will be given, and the first banners of the Greater Terran Union to be raised in another galaxy will be carried aboard the warships of VVS-989, Ryan's Raiders. Oh, look how many ships to have that. That's nuts. Okay, that is the end of the video. Woo. That's nuts. See how many ships they have at the end? Still going strong. Still going strong. Uh, they're already choosing uh, due targets in, other, in another galaxy. They're already planning to go to a different galaxy. They're picking up people, they uh, species, maybe, maybe cities and things they think of threats, entire worlds, maybe. So, is this the continuation of it? Is this what it is? Is it, it going to continue on getting to another galaxy? Maybe not, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, though. You know, it, it's different from, from the other ones because it's not part of the main story. The story's already been told. 
it's sort of like like what happened within the story. You know, background things we didn't know. I like that. I like the fact they're just bringing out different content after the main story's already finished. But it keeps it alive, you know. It keeps it... Well, I hope you enjoyed the reaction. And... I don't, I don't know it didn't stop it very, very much, but it was just enjoying the video that much. <laughs> there wasn't really much for me to say in this one, you know? But I was just kind of struggling to get things to say. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you to people who requested it. And I know it's been a long time coming, but here it is finally. And more is on the way. Don't worry. If you like this video, let me know. Comment section down below. And all that helps me out as well. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. You might want to check out my second channel, which is Bio Spartan Tick 2, where I do movie and anime reactions so far. I might be doing TV reactions at some point. Nobody's requested any yet, but that's fine. I'm happy enough doing the movies and uh, anime. You might want to check that out if you like that sort of thing. I thought this one was interesting. And until next time, I am out of here.